cook. I forgot to say, uh, I talked to Sean. He wanted me to tell everybody to remember him in prayer tonight. They had a lot going on up on the mountain, on the mountain up there, and that he was going to be up there for quite some time. They have to get that. They get that pump pulled, or they say they, they got it pulled, but now they don't know if the well is going to be able to put another pump in there uh, because of it being used with all the kids and things coming there. It, it, it has to be as certain state guidelines it's got to pass, and it's so old that uh, when they pulled it out, uh, they think that it's not actually sealing up at the bottom like it's supposed to. Uh, so they got to run a camera down in there and inspect it and see and. Uh, talked to uh, Eddie Waters, the one that pulled it for him, and he said that uh, it was kind of questionable if they was going to be able to even use that well or not. They said he won't really know until he got the camera down in there. So even if even if not, just the pump for it's going to cost them like $3,600, and that's not paying him labor to put it back in or anything else. Wow. Remember that. I got anything to say or do before I get going here. All right. That was your chance. All right. Awful quiet tonight. I know. I'm about half tired. Why? Everybody must just be tired or some deep meditation. I just got about one scripture about all I want to read. I'm going to read a couple to get there. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> kind of build up. Got your Bible tonight. Go to the book of John. Uh, Six chapter. Very familiar. Very scripture. scripture. Very familiar. First of all, chapter. Yeah, I'm, I'm only going to read 70 of them, so. Looks like there's one left. Yeah. I'm, only, I'm, going, I'm working to 70, but I'm going to read 69 to get there. No, I'm just kidding. All right, everybody there? Mm -hmm. I'll start in the 15th verse. See, now y'all know it's a very familiar scripture. What am I? This is one of my favorites. I like in the book of Mark, but this is one of my uh, favorites here. And I'll, I'll just read a little bit here. And, and like I said, I'm going to try to keep it short. And I just want to get to one point here. It says, uh, Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. I would say it's funny, but it's not funny. Even these people realized who Jesus was without even admitting it. Uh, they still allowed him to be crucified. They still uh, done all that stuff. But right here, they were ready to make him king. Why? Because they saw something. Yep. Amen? Uh, and it's kind of where I'm going tonight. Uh, when, you, you, when you see something in Jesus... Amen. Not church, not religion. Uh, when you see who Jesus is. How many people in here ever seen who Jesus is? Hey, I heard about Jesus when I was a boy. Uh, I heard about Jesus in a whole lot of churches, but I didn't know who he was. I knew what somebody else's opinion of him was. I knew what somebody else said he could and he couldn't do, Chris. But until I met him, amen, there was one night, and I never will forget it, because it changed my life and it's still changing my life all these years later I met and realized within myself nobody else's opinion nobody else's uh, definition of it I knew who Jesus was I knew he was king of kings and he was lord of lords and all these years later I still know who he is amen and, and you know what and, and all those years Chris Jesus has never changed amen my perception of him may have changed. My opinion of him may change sometimes. Who I think he is may change sometimes. Who I think he should be may change sometimes. But in all those years, uh, from 1998 till right now, I ain't smart enough or good enough in math to count up. I ain't got enough fingers to tell you 
how many years that is. Jesus has never changed. He was the same in 1998 sitting on the back pew of Harvest Missionary Church as he is right now standing up here behind the pulpit in Daily Walk Ministries. Amen. He's exactly the same. I know who he was. Who he revealed himself to me that night is who he still is right now. Amen. Amen. Didn't change. They know he was king. A lot of people know who Jesus is. They just don't act like it. A lot of people know who Jesus is, but they want Jesus to change. They think Jesus should bend or bow, or, or I'm going to take what I thought Jesus was and I'm going to mold him into what my definition of what Jesus should be. It don't work that way. And it never will. It'll always be who he is. Amen. 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 I don't know who Jesus is. Read the book. I ask. Amen. Anybody in here try to make Jesus be something he ain't? Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, we may even try to find a scripture to go with that, Chris. Yeah. And, and try to twist that thing and turn it and, and make it into something that it's not. It don't work that way. Amen. It don't work that way. I guarantee you if Jesus chose to come right now, 2023, downtown LJ, and walk these streets, I guarantee you'd be the same Jesus that walked the streets of, of Galilee and Bethlehem and all that 2,000 and something years ago. Be the same Jesus. Amen. He preached the same word. He still tell you better repent. He still tell you that he's the only way. He still tell you he loved you. Be the same Jesus. Amen. Now he may have a different parable. You think, well, what are you talking about? You know, I think about that sometimes. You know, if Jesus come back modern time, how many people in here know about a vineyard? How many people in here know about grapes and stuff? We don't know about that. He may come tell me about your thing. I don't know. But the, 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 the bottom line would still always be the same. Amen. He, he don't change. Well, where do you get that? I, I, people tell you now, Jesus has changed. He's a modern Jesus. He's a No, he ain't. He's the same. Amen. He covered that before he went away because he knew there'd be somebody stupid enough one day to stand up and say that, and there'd be somebody stupid enough sitting on a padded pew to believe it. He said, I'm the same yesterday, uh, today, and forevermore. He covered it. They knew who he was. See, I got all on that, and I ain't even where I'm going. <laughs> Amen? We got to know, but until you know, you can't tell. You ever try to tell somebody something you don't know? Mm -hmm. Amen? Uh, where I used to work, the company I used to work for, they, they're, they're bankrupt now, but we, we had a, a urethane coder. That's all I've ever done. All it is is you mix a bunch of Chemicals together and it blows up and makes stuff. You ever, you ever go to Walmart and see the great stuff in the can where you can squeeze it and it fills the cracks? Mm -hmm. That's a form of urethane. That's what I'm at, just a whole lot bigger scale. And I would go to these meetings and we'd have to go in before the vice presidents and all these people up at corporate. And they had a big old conference table. And, and my boss would always say, hey, because he knew it wasn't lie. He'd say, what could cause that? I'd go through a list. He'd be writing it down. So what are you going to do? He said, they don't know. I'm going to tell them any of this. They don't know what I'm talking about. They'll just nod their head because they want to act like they know, but they don't know. If we're not careful, we'll act like we know who Jesus is and not know. A lot of people think they know who Jesus is, but they don't. If it don't line up with this, it's not Jesus. Amen. Chris, if it goes against any part of this, it's not Jesus. Amen. I could ask everybody in here, I could ask everybody watching, and if we're honest, if I ask you for something in this book you don't like, how many of you raise your hand? If I ask you for something in this book you don't understand, how many of you raise your hand? Every one of us. If I ask you for something in this book you don't agree with, how many of you raise your hand? Hey, about every one of us would. But you know what? 
You're not going to get up there and Jesus say, well, Ted, you're right. You are right. Let me go back and, and revise this. I'm put up. What do they call that little mark? Asterisk. What do you call that little? No, the, uh, asterisk mark, yeah. Put a little asterisk by that. And at the bottom in the footnotes, I'm going to put, Chad, yeah, don't like that, so I've changed it. Chris, I've read this thing. All kind of translations, all kind of study. By, only place I've ever seen my name in here is where it says it belongs to in the front. That's it. Amen. Amen. We got to realize, and, and we lose sight of that sometimes because if we're not careful, as things trend, as the world changes, as the news changes, uh, people try to change Jesus to fit into that. Amen. They try to change religion and church to fit into that. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus preached uh, for three and a half years, the best everybody can tell. I'm not no Bible scholar, and I ain't got it uh, marked down on the calendar, uh, but he preached for three and a half years, and he preached the same thing. Now, most people, all Jesus ever preached was love. Uh -uh. You can't have one piece of it without all of it. Amen, hey, man, you can't. You're living, you're living something false. Now evening came, and his disciples went down to the sea, and they got into a boat, boat verse 17, and they went over the sea toward uh, Capernaum. And it was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. So they got in a the boat, they left, Jesus was still over there somewhere. Then the sea arose because of a great wind was blowing. So they got out there, and trouble came. Amen? See, once we find out who Jesus is, how many people in here remember when you got saved? That that closeness, that, I don't know how, I, don't, I can't really, Chris, put it in words. But if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. It may sound stupid, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know the feeling. And words can't describe that feeling of when Jesus, you know, is there. And when you're, have you ever been just so close to Jesus that nothing else mattered? Yep. So hung up on Jesus, you couldn't read enough, you couldn't listen to enough, you couldn't sing enough, you couldn't talk enough about Jesus. It was just, Jesus consumed you. But have you ever been in a time where you couldn't feel Jesus? Amen. Have you ever been in a time when you, you really wondered if Jesus was even there? Amen. Most of us have. If you've been saved long enough, uh, there's come a time when you felt that. Maybe uh, things didn't go the way you planned them or something fell apart and you wondered, well, Jesus, where are you at? Are you still here? He was still there. Sometimes I may not feel him like I want to, Chris, and sometimes, most of the time, if I'll be honest, that's my fault. Because I go away. Not him. And sometimes uh, when, I, when I get outside of Jesus, if I'm not careful, I'll forget who he is. And I'll forget what he can do. Amen? Amen. But the good thing is if I forget, uh, Jesus still knows where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Amen? Uh, there, there's never been a day since I was saved that Jesus got up one morning and went running into the throne room of grace and the presence of God and said, I've lost Chad. I don't know where he's at. Amen. It's like he's, what's them things they put on your car, a tracker, or on your phone? Jesus has got a tracker on me. He knows where I'm at. I belong to him. <coughs> See, when uh, I accepted him and he saved my soul, uh, I became his property. So you dang right he knows where I'm at. Amen? And the sea arose and become a great wind was blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, when they rowed three or four, that's a long way. Amen? I, I wouldn't even want to imagine 
I remember we went to West Point Lake one time fishing, run out of gas, trolling motor battery, went dead, and we rode, and we rode, and we rode. Yeah, the wind blow, you look, there's an island. Ten minutes later, you're farther back behind it than you was when you went. People blowing by on both sides. And uh, Lord, forgive me for the stuff I thought. <laughs> hey, man, these guys were rowing and rowing and rowing. And just think, I bet with every stroke of that paddle, they wondered where Jesus was at. <laughs> where you at, Jesus? Where you at? And then they saw Jesus walking on the sea. I can always draw strength. I always get a smile on my face when I read that, uh, that Jesus come walking on their struggles. Jesus come walking right in on top of the very thing that was hindering them. The very thing that was stopping them, slowing them down, the very thing they were fighting against, he just walked right in on top of it. I guess that's what it means when he said everything be his footstool. Amen? <clears throat> and drawing near to the boat, they were afraid. I wonder why they were afraid. <clears throat> Amen? I wonder. You ever wonder why they were afraid? I think sometimes it's maybe because for a little bit they forgot who Jesus was. Yep. In that situation right there, they forgot who Jesus was. Yeah. You ever found yourself somewhere you didn't want to be? In a situation you didn't want to be in? Struggling against something and feeling like you were getting nowhere? And then when Jesus shows up, sometimes we get scared. We get ashamed. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen? I've been out here for four miles. That's how long it said they had rode. Not once did they call on Jesus. How far do we get in our troubles? How far do we get in our struggles before we call on Jesus? The Bible says pride goeth before destruction, the Holy Spirit before a fall. Sometimes we get too prideful and we think we're going to fix it on our own. And we're going to get through it on our own. And I got myself in this mess and I'll get myself out. No, you ain't got to. You got to remember who told you to go. Amen. 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 They were afraid. The Bible says perfect love. Cast out all fear. All fear. If you have fear, it is not of God. Amen. Hey, there should not be a fear in the presence of God. If I've done my part, if I love him perfectly and he loves me perfectly, what have I got to be afraid of? Amen. But our problem is, and notice I said there's a lot of times that we want God's perfect love to work our way. But we don't want to give that perfect love back to him. Amen? Am I the only one sometimes that holds God to everything he says but leaves out my part? Yeah, come on. Amen? God, you said this, you better do this. And if you're not careful, the Holy Spirit will come and quicken you and say, oh yeah, it also says that you should do this. Well, I don't hear that though. I don't hear that. I'll just go back to rowing. Amen? A lot of times, Chris, we're rowing away from him because we're scared. How many people, how many people out there right now, right now running from God, running from a calling from God, uh, scared to come back to church? Why? Because uh, they're scared to come in the presence of God when they know with everything in them that God still loves them and can still forgive them and can help them with whatever they're going through. But fear keeps you away. Mm -hmm. Amen? How many people right now, Chris, uh, you think it's not stepping into their calling. It's sitting in a church every Sunday. But they won't step into their calling because they're scared. Mm -hmm. Because they, we, well, I ain't going to say they, we forget that the same God that called us equipped us when he called us. And he already enabled us to do what he's called us to do. We, we read in here 
uh, where he used a donkey to talk to somebody and he used murders and he used adulterers and he used all those other things. But then we look at ourselves and think he can't use me. Yeah, come on. Amen. Yeah, come on. We lose sight and we let fear come in. And fear will separate you from what God has in store for you. I have not given you the spirit of fear. I, I think to Adam and Eve, and I told you I was going to try to keep it short, but I think I lied. I, I think about Adam and Eve. Yeah, there you go. They walked, and God come down every day and walked in the cool of the garden with them. And I like to read that, Chris, and think, man, how cool would that be? And then I think, well, stupid, he'll come down here and walk with you every day. He walks with you every day. It may not be in the cool of the garden, Ken, but it's to the weight of my Toyota when I'm on my way to work. And, and God come and, and he, he, God craved that fellowship. Amen. Think about that. God wants to spend time with us. God wants to hang out with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to know what's going on in your life. He wants to know the good. He wants to know the bad. He wants to know what you're proud of, what you're ashamed of, what you struggle with. He wants that relationship. Amen. We lose sight of that sometimes. I'm going to try to move on. I'm getting sidetracked. I'll make a mental note of that. I'm going to have to preach that one day. It'll be good. But he come down and he walked with them until they sinned. Now this is the God that loved them. The God that created them. The God that made a perfect garden. Think about it. It didn't have to work. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Just hang out with God. Name animals. Amen. Until they sinned. Then what happened? Fear took over. When God came that day to do the same thing that he always done, which was come to walk in the garden with them, what did they do? They hid. They hid. And just like it didn't work for them all those years ago, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, it ain't going to work for you today. Amen. God said, hey Adam, what you hiding for? Like he... Like God didn't know where he was at. That's one of them trick questions, amen. Remember your mom and daddy when you was a kid, they'd ask you a question and they know the answer. They just wanted you to hang yourself. They just want to see if you was going to lie or not. Kind of like a game warden or something. If they show up asking questions, they know. You better tell them. He said, I'm hid myself because I'm naked. Well, who told you he was naked? Amen. God knew. He knew he ate of the tree before he got there. Mm -hmm. Now, what we got to remember is for every sin, there's a consequence. Always remember that. You know what? If I go down here and rob the region's bank and, and I come in here with a big old sack full of money and I get an altar and say, God, <clears throat> I've sinned, man. I robbed the region's bank and stole all this money. You think the cops are going to come up here and say, well, he repented. We're just going to take the money back. Don't do it again. No, God will forgive me when I ask him. But the cops still going to take me to jail for robbing the bank. There's consequences. God said, hey, I still love you. You're still made in my image. You're still Adam and Eve. But you can't stay here anymore because you got to reap what you sow. Amen? But when we fear God, we can't say who God really is anymore because fear clouds that. Amen? How many people in here have been scared? Not just of God, of anything. Maybe it's a snake, maybe it's a spider, maybe it's a scary movie. Amen? Hey, right? All of the above. Yeah. You get scared. Your perception of things changes. People do crazy stuff when they get scared. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people, they just, they lose their mind. I think how we are when we get scared of, why would we be scared of God? Bless you. 
But they were afraid. <clears throat> Ain't got to be afraid. Ain't got to be afraid. But he said to them, I like it, Jesus knew they were afraid. They didn't jump up in the boat and say, hey, we're scared of you. Hey, man, get behind me. No, he could tell. Just like uh, whatever people are sitting scared of, whatever, he knows. And I like what he did, Chris. He didn't come and, and say, I rebuke you that, that, you're, that you're scared and uh, that shows your lack of faith and you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And uh, now uh, I'm going to let the boat sink and kill y'all because that'll teach you. Amen. Hey, if we're honest, sometimes we think that's what God's going to do to us. Yep. Right? How many people here say, well, I got this old cold because I didn't listen. To the I've heard people say that. God's give me this and God give me that. <clears throat> I wouldn't be going to tell nobody. Amen. Hey, God give me the flu. I'll see you Sunday. You want to come to church with me? He said to them, It is I. Be not afraid. Amen. Amen. It is I. Be not afraid. You may have been scared before I got here, but don't be scared now. You may have been toiling for four miles. I don't know how long it'd take uh, to row a boat four miles, but it'd be a while. So that means they'd been in it for a little bit. Amen. And I would wager to say they wouldn't uh, sing and uh, come as you are and praising the Lord the whole time they were rowing that four miles. Hey, man, I'm just going to go out on a limb there. But when Jesus showed up, uh, he saw what they needed most. What did they need most? Come. They needed reassured to fear not because I'm here now. Hey, man, there's no better feeling than when that fear leaves. How many people in here have been scared of the dark? Right? Hey, what happens when the light comes on? Fear goes away. You're scared of that big old spider and Chris comes in there and stomps on him. Fear goes away. Say, now she likes you. Hey, I'm here for you, brother. Fear goes away. How many people in here, and they can't see you on camera, how many people in here has uh, done something that you feel ashamed of before God, say in the last six weeks? Probably last week, if we'll be honest. But. Right, what, happened, what happened when you confessed it before God? Did he jump up and drop the smack on you and tuck my Bible, Chris, and told me I couldn't preach for three weeks? and? He took that fear away. Fear, amen? That's what it is that separates us from God. It's that fear. We think for some reason that God just stops loving us. Amen? Right? It's kind of like your kids. How many people in here love your kids less because they do something? You may want to. You may think about it. You may threaten it. Amen? But in all I know, it's ingrained in you. Just like God so loved the world, we read it Sunday, that he gave his only begotten son. He gave the best thing he had. He gave that. Why? Because he loved you. And he loved you that much before you had ever done a thing. Amen. Amen? He said, hey, it's me. It's Jesus. The one I'm here. The one you wanted to make king. Remember that when you read that? I'm circling back around. The same one y'all wanted to make king, one, the same one that you thought would be the deliverer, the same one y'all thought God would send, that's what kind of king they're talking about. That's what they've been looking for. For hundreds of years, they've been looking for this king that was prophesied about in the Old Testament, and they thought this king was going to come in here and, and strike down the Romans and be what they wanted. They thought they know Jesus was that. They said right there, uh, he perceived, Jesus perceived. That they were going to make him king. That means there had to be some, some kind of fruit there that they. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, Hey, it's me. The 
the same guy y'all are talking about making king, the same guy that looked like he was the answer to all those prophecies, the same guy they've been talking about, guess what, that's me. Don't be afraid. Remember who I am in this point instead of the problem. Amen. Amen. Uh, don't feed into the fear, but remember who I am. See, we lose sight sometimes of who Jesus is. Which brings me to the only scripture I really wanted to read. 21. Then they willingly received him into the boat. They willingly received him into the boat. They said, come on in. Fear's got to go. You come on in. I'm going to believe who you are. Come on in. Didn't say Jesus had a five horsepower Evan Rood. Amen? Nope, it was just him. If we got a problem today, we have a problem willingly receiving Jesus into our vessel. The Jesus. The true Jesus. Now we have no problem receiving the one that we want him to be. But sometimes we have a problem accepting him for who he is. Amen. Into our vessel. Amen. They could have said, hey, where's the money? Where's the fame? I'm just going to kick back right here. You just wake me up and we get to the other side, Jesus. Mm -mm. Once he said, it's me, fear not. Come on in. I'm going to take you at that. Come on in. They willingly received him into the boat. I like that, and immediately. It started by them receiving Jesus. It always starts with us receiving Jesus into our vessel into our troubles, into our fear, into our sorrow. I could go on and on down the line, but I hope y'all get the point. We must receive Jesus into that because whatever you're going through, whatever that is, he is the answer. Just like when you're weak, he may come to you and say, it is I. I got you strength. He's got it. But you know what, Chris? If I read this, if I know before he, I get in trouble that he's the king, I'll remember that. And when trouble comes, trouble will come. I think I read it last week where it said if, if you live a godly life, you will suffer persecution. That's what Paul said. That's, it's yeah. in there. I didn't make that up. Uh, I'm not putting you down, but I'm just telling you, if you live a godly life, persecution will come. You know what? If you live an ungodly life, persecution will come. Amen. Jesus said, I'll make it rain on the just and the unjust. Amen. Do you know what? When the hard times come, I would rather have Jesus with me. Chris, I'd rather Jesus walk out into my storm and say, be not afraid, it is I. And in that moment, I can receive him for who he is. Amen. See, too many of us trying to put stipulations on Jesus before we let him in the boat. Amen. Now I'm going to let this, this, and this part of you in the boat, Jesus, but I ain't bringing it all in here. You can leave that, 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 and that outside. It don't work that way. You just got to receive it. Jesus is, it, it, it's the full package, Chris. Yeah, God's a loving God. Yeah, he's a merciful God. Yes, his mercies are renewed every day, but he's also a jealous God, a vengeful God, a God that expects what he gives you. And I could go on and on. We don't want that one. Leave that one outside the boat. I just want to receive that good Jesus. Yeah, come on. I just want the bright side. Uh, sun comes up every day and the unicorns run around and I got all kind of money. My family gets along good and my church loves me and my job loves me and nobody ever says a bad word and no old lady ever pulls out in front of me in traffic. Oh, yes, I'll take that Jesus. I don't want to go in, Chris, and heat exchanger blow up and have to spend all day in a, in a hole about twice as big as that right there picking up a 75-pound valve putting it on. I, I don't know. 
You can keep that. No. We got to willingly receive Jesus for who he is. Amen. Into every situation you find yourself in. How many people in here ever prayed to God? Hope everybody's prayed to God. And asked him to move in a situation in a certain way and he done it. Amen. Amen. All right. Before you throw your hand down. How many people in here has ever prayed to God about a certain situation and told him what you wanted done and you didn't get it? Same hands are up. Amen. Does that change who God is? No. Does that lessen God in your eyes? Does that make him uh, not, he can't do everything and he's not all knowing and he don't love me? No. That's who he is. Well, how do you know that? The Bible says if, if I ask, if I obey God, I can ask anything I want in his name. And he hears me. Hey, I remember I used to make big old Christmas lists every year. And somebody heard them. But I didn't get all that stuff. What happened? God knows what's good and what's bad for you. Yeah. Even when you don't. And God ain't a magic lamp that I can get this book and rub it and everything I want pop out of it. It'll never happen that way. God said he'd give me the desires of my heart. We throw that up all the time. You'll give me the desires of my heart. Well, God knows your heart better than you do because he made it. Amen. 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 And, and he knows what you truly desire sometimes. We've got to willingly receive Jesus into our boat. And when they done that, the Bible says immediately, the boat was at the land where, where they were going. I love, in, in the book of Mark, it tells this, and it said that Jesus told him, he said, let us pass over to the other side. Let us go to the other side. In other words, uh, I know what's out there. I know what's coming, uh, but I've done spoken, and you're going to get there. Amen. Why? Because it's my word, and my word can't change. My word can't lie. Jesus tells you it's going to happen. It's got to happen. Amen. Now, if you thank you here, Jesus, Amen. And you try to will Jesus into doing something that you want and it don't happen, and that was you. I, I watched this thing and it, it, it was like religious cults and these people had said when the end of the world was coming, set a date, and I'm thinking, how stupid are you? Why would you listen? It'd be like me coming in here next Sunday and say, all right, everybody, I've dug a hole in Eton and I put a shipping container in it. And 18th of July this next month, Jesus is a coming. I need all y'all there on the 17th. Bring two cans of Spam, some saltine crackers, and some water and meet me in the yard. Jesus is coming. I pray to God nobody in here will be stupid enough to show up. Amen. Why? Because Jesus, Jesus said, no man Knows the day except my Father. Except my father. Amen. That's what he said. Jesus said it. Where did he say that at, preacher? Where did you get this? Out of here. Amen. So automatically, if you come tell me that Jesus told you that the day is coming, I'm telling you a liar. Because I know who Jesus is Amen. and I know what he said. Now, why do we so easily get caught up on stuff that we know ain't true? Because when we're three miles into a four-mile row, we forget. Amen. We can quickly lose sight. Amen? But all it takes is to receive him back just as he is. Now, they could have said, Jesus, why didn't you show up three miles ago? Man, I'm wore out. You said you'd never put nothing on me. Wouldn't call me the man. Hey, man. Well, Jesus probably think, well, you made it four miles at Dinky. Say so that word, hey, if we're not careful, we laugh about it, but if we're not careful, we'll lose sight of who Jesus is. 
based on what we think he should be. Amen. And I, I'm coming to tell you tonight, Jesus loves you. He loves y'all. He loves everybody watching. Uh, he loves you more than you'll ever know. So don't get me wrong when I hear this, but Jesus will not change Amen. for you. Amen. There is no there is no chance, Jesus, and Chris is Jesus, and uh-uh. It's one size fits all. You go to Walmart, buy a hat, says one size. Well, now it says one size fits most. I guess if somebody had a big gourd out there and a hat wouldn't fit it. I don't know. But, uh, Jesus, he's a one size fits all. He is what he says he is. Amen. And he is to me what he is to you. Amen. Amen. And we got to receive him. And we got to receive him for that. You know what? We can sit around and bellyate why Jesus let this happen, and we do it. Come on, right? Uh, why did this happen? Why did this go on? Or we could be like those dudes. Once he showed up, they didn't care. Amen? They, they, they four miles in. They just glad he showed up. Come on in here. I'm tired. Man, what if we could say that sometimes? Just come on in here, Jesus. I'm tired. I'm just going to take you for your word because I'm tired. Amen? Ah, I told you we won't go by that long. Hope everybody got something out of that, like I said. Will and flee. The key to that is we got to will and flee, receive Jesus Amen. for who he is. Amen. Amen. Uh, have one last question, I'm done. How many people believe Jesus has only your best intentions in mind? Amen. Amen. If you don't, you better read the book. Better read the book. And if we know that, and now within the next three weeks, some of us are going to be belly aching again because we'll lose sight of it, right? Mm -hmm. But what if we just willingly received him the way he was? What if I got up this morning, went to work, drunk my coffee, went in there, got everything set up, heat exchanger blowed? I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, it didn't blow up and kill us all. Thank you, Lord, I wasn't standing in front of that thing when 350 pounds of back pressure come through it. At least, God, I may not be the smartest thing in the world, but I have enough sense to tire it apart and put it back together. Thank you, Lord, we're not that far behind it. I ain't going to have to work Saturday. You're so good to me, Jesus. No, I thought, here, I'm going to have to get in that stinking hole and pick that valve up. Stupid heat exchanger. <laughs> right? Don't take much to change your perception of who Jesus is. Same Jesus got me safely to work in the old Toyota this morning. The same Jesus in that hole with me when I got that valve out. <laughs> Amen. Didn't drop it on my hand. Didn't crush my finger. Hey, God is good. We have to learn who he is. How do you learn? We keep reading. This thing's every day renewed. You can find something every day Amen. to encourage you. Amen. Every day. Mm -hmm. It may be a scripture you've read a hundred times and then something just click. Because mm -hmm. if we always have a mindset of who Jesus is, it's kind of like you ever been so reliant on Jesus No, regardless of what happens, you didn't worry because you know he's coming. Amen. That's how we should be all the time. Amen? Should be. And then we just got to accept it. When he shows up. All right. Anybody got anything to say or do if we're praying this mess? I didn't figure they would. All right. Everybody stand to your feet. We'll pray. Get out of here.